Hi folks and welcome back to uh, my, my second video on flashlights uh, and on this one I'm going to briefly and hopefully quickly not bore you too much um, discuss batteries um, and I'm going to do that in two parts and first we're going to have a look at um, what's readily available in the UK and by that I mean AAAs, AAs, Cs and Ds um, and what I'm about to say uh, in terms of battery chemistry which I'll explain what that is in a moment applies to AAAs double A's, C's and D's equally. Uh, and the one I'm holding here as an example is a, is a triple A, uh, RAC branded, uh, and this is what we call a zinc battery. Um, and you can get zinc batteries in all the sizes. And and to be honest, just don't bother. Uh, zinc, zinc batteries are absolutely awful. I, d I just can't believe that they're even bothering to, um, uh, to sell them. I mean, I kept these um, just as an example, so I could show you on this video, but uh, if you see zinc on the side of anything, just trust me, don't bother. That They have no capacity, they won't last, they'll tend to leak, they'll just destroy your equipment. Your second type of disposable battery, um, and these are the ones that you should be really aiming for, um, are your alkaline. Uh, and I don't really notice on the Duracell adverts, it said, you know, lasts up to 10 times longer, and you look at the small print and what it's referring to, uh, an alkaline battery lasting 10 times longer than a zinc. It's nothing to do with it being a Duracell, it's just to do with it's a different battery chemistry, i.e. an alkaline battery. And alkaline batteries are far, far superior uh, than zinc. Uh, and you can get decent alkaline batteries for a very reasonable price. So I think um, these Hyundai ones here, they, I think they were £1.99 for 24 And those absolutely wipe the floor with any zinc. There's another type that is available, which is your lithium um, disposable battery. These are not rechargeable, as it says on there. Um, I'm not sure I'd particularly recommend these over and above an alkaline. Um, they certainly uh, last longer. Uh, they're quite a bit lighter. The shelf life is a lot longer, but they're, they're so expensive. And I'm not sure whether the additional expense justifies um, buying this type of battery as, as a norm. Um, unless you've got some particular you know, professional or, or critical purpose for them, then I suppose you might get them. But generally speaking, stick with your, um, stick with your alkaline type batteries. Uh, in terms of rechargeable uh, batteries, there are, and again this applies to double A's, triple A's, C's and D's. You've got your NICAD, N-I-C-D, um, don't have those those are the batteries that we've all heard of long ago that have a memory effect so if you only use half of the capacity of the battery and then you recharge it um it will then only run to the capacity that you've used and then recharge so that th those are absolutely useless i haven't got any of those knocking around to show you they, they've long since been um disposed of um if you're going to go for rechargeable batteries then try and concentrate on um nickel metal hydride and there are basically two varieties of, of those in fact I'll just pause this video and just get a couple that we can have a look at but sorry about that so um, in, in terms of recharge and again this applies to any size of the rechargeables we've got your standard uh, nickel metal hydride now the problem is with this type of battery is they, they self discharge quite quickly so you know you charge them up full you put them away in the cupboard uh, and very very quickly you'll find um, you know over you know a period of perhaps several months that they'll be virtually flat so those types are good um, if you want to say charge them up today and use them tomorrow um, to try and get around that there are certain manufacturers uh, these ones just happen to be enter loops that hold the charge a lot longer so you can charge one of these uh, types of batteries uh, and it will retain its charge for much longer and they're unfortunately a lot more expensive but you can pop these things in, in the cupboard when they've been charged up and they'll, they'll last you quite some time before you need to recharge them so that, that's your kind of batteries that are available in the UK however jumping over to these types uh, your Lie ion 3.6, 3.7 volt of, you, of the various sizes, particular ones in 18650. And, and, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Um, 
Um, so if we grab one of those versus, bear with me a second. One of those. Now they'll, they'll refer to um, the capacity of the battery somewhere and on these particular ones are 25 milliamp hour, which means that, that's the power capacity held within this battery. Now, on that note, the UK market, eBay in particular, is flooded um, with, with things like this. Um, 5,000 milliamp hour. Mm. Uh, this particular one made by Samsung is 2,500 milliamp hour. Okay, this one's much better. Um, in fact, let's go better still. What's this one claim to be? 6,800 milliamp hours. That's astonishing. But holding it, you, it, you, it just doesn't feel right. And the best way to demonstrate that, I think, we'll just pop it on there, we'll turn it on. Samsung battery, 42 grams, 41. 22, 21. I can feel it moving around <laughs> when you shake it. And what the problem is with that particular battery, um, and this one, and these, is that the fake. They do not do what it says on the side. And th these are your eBay specials. The highest capacity, 18650 at the moment from your top manufacturers, you're running around 3500 milliamp hour. That's for a really, really high quality battery, um, you know, from a decent manufacturer. Uh, and it's impossible using today's current capabilities, science, technology, whatever we want to call it, to make anything with a higher capacity than that. So this 6,800 milliamp hour battery, is it, well that's impossible as we start. And when I tested it, it turned out at about 400 milliamp hours. So it, was, it claims to be nearly double the power of this particular one. And it's not, it's, it's a tiny fraction. It's not 6,800, it's about 400. Um, this particular one uh, that claims to be 2200 milliamp hour it wasn't it tested at 164 so these batteries here and these I just simply keep them for examples of what not to buy that they're, they're complete garbage don't don't bother with them um, stick with decent quality batteries from a decent manufacturer and I'll put a link to the um, to, to the types of batteries that um, that I would recommend in particular those that are readily available in the in the UK uh, and and where you can get them from so assuming that we're dealing with a decent quality battery uh, and we'll have a look at these two here as a as a quick example or, or perhaps this one now when I mention 18650 referring to the dimensions of the battery this one's quite a bit longer uh, and the reason for that is um, of all the types of batteries whether it be the 26650 or the 18650 or anything in between you've got what you call your unprotected and you protected uh, and, and to run through briefly what that is um, this particular battery here uh, and all others of the similar manufacturer who use the same what they call protected cell uh, just at the top there's some circuitry built in that prevents you from either charging the battery too much or discharging it too much. The downside with that is that it increases the length of the battery and also it decreases the maximum output of the battery because it's got to run through that protection circuit. <coughs> and this particular battery is marked up at 8 amps. So 
we can put this battery in an appliance that will draw up to and including 8 amps. Anything exceeding that and the protection circuit will trip and this battery will, will, will turn itself off basically. Um, this type of battery on the other hand, in fact I'll use this one, um, there's no protection circuit built into this and as a consequence this particular one, a Samsung, that will allow you to draw up to 20 amps but it won't cut itself out if you over discharge it and it won't cut itself out if you overcharge it. Now that is in some way alleviated um, by two factors. First of all a decent quality battery charger such as this. Um, there are several different models I'm not particularly recommending this one. Uh, they will not overcharge your battery. They won't do it. Um, if you buy um, a cheap Chinese torch, something like that, that has, um, you know, this particular one hasn't, uh, let me find, and this isn't a cheap Chinese torch by the way, but if, if you were to have a cheap Chinese torch with a built-in USB charger, it's very unlikely that the torch itself uh, would have a protection in it against an overcharge. So that would be extremely risky to be buying a, you know, an eBay special torch with a USB charging slot on it uh, and then put an unprotected cell in it because it would just simply cook and cook and cook until you know it, it gets too hot or worst case scenario catches fire whereas this type of battery you wouldn't have that problem but if you're buying a cheap cheap torch from China it's not going to come with a decent quality battery so just don't risk it uh, incidentally a lot of the manufacturers in Olat for example uh, would also build into their torch a discharge protection so the, to the torch would, would know, if, if you like, for want of better terminology, when the voltage was getting too low and it would cut out. So if you're using a decent quality torch, and I'll just, sorry, jump back to this one again as an example. Um, this particular model, as do many others, you know, within the, you know, the premium or decent um, price ranges and quality ranges, um, even though it's got a built-in USB port, it will not let you over-discharge a battery. Uh, and it won't let you overcharge either. So that type of torch used in conjunction with, um, you know, the the, the, de the decent the decent charger uh, will ensure that you that you're running safely within the limits of the battery. Um, so with that in mind, I, I tend not to be particularly fussy whether I use uh, protected or unprotected cells. Um, once you're mindful uh, of the you know the the problems and pros and cons of of, of each. And the last thing I'll mention in terms of batteries is um, perhaps something unique to the UK is that most of your 18650 batteries are what they call flat top. Um, if you have a quick look there, you can see sort of this one's got a little button on top, that one hasn't. Now, these batteries came into the UK primarily for your vaping devices. Uh, and they all run off these flat top batteries and flat top batteries are not always suitable um, for torches simply because well reason number one if, if your torch takes two batteries uh, and they're, they're flat tops you won't get a connection so they wouldn't work uh, and the reason of the being flat top is a safety feature if you um, have multiple button tops rolling around there's a chance that you can short circuit if you've got multiple ones in your pocket um, I think the correct solution to that is uh, make sure that you keep your batteries in a suitable carry case. So I'll be putting a link into the description as to the um, types of batteries that I found that I can obtain in the UK that, that work well. Um, Sony's, Samsung's, LG, uh, decent manufacturers like uh, Nightcore I've got here. got plenty of Olight batteries knocking around. Um, but ranging from relatively low expensive to you know to really expensive i think that you probably pick up these ones here for about four pounds and these ones are sort of about 20 pounds so that's uh, this particular video on batteries uh, coming to a close and if any of the particular torches that um, i'm discussing or reviewing are, are going to be battery sensitive um, so for example this particular one if it doesn't like a flat top unprotected battery, I'll be pointing that out in the videos. Thank you very much.